Geek Therapy Radio. Welcome to Geek Therapy Radio. I am, of course, your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. I should say the Geek Therapy Radio podcast, as this is not for air on the radio show that airs at 10 p.m. Saturday nights. And as of January 26, 2020, it also airs at 6 p.m. Sunday evening. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, so in the podcast today, I want to do something a little bit different that I, I don't think that I've done before on the show, and that is at least open the show with a specific product review. Now, if any of you, if a lot of you listening to the podcast are subscribed to the Geek Therapy Radio uh, YouTube channel, you've seen me upload a very brief video about this product uh, a few months ago. Really, it was an experimental video on all fronts. I basically screen captured off my phone. But the point of the video was to showcase the 8-bit dough zero. 8-Bit Doe is one of my favorite uh, third-party Bluetooth controller manufacturers. Uh, They make more than just Bluetooth controllers. They make USB controllers as well. 8-Bit Doe is not paying me at all to review this product, the 8-Bit Doe Zero. They've come out with a new 8-Bit Doe Zero 2. Regardless, right now I'm reviewing the uh, first generation of 8-Bit Doe Zero. Um... And, but they're not paying me to do it. They didn't send me anything for free. I could call it a big fat piece of crap if I want to with, with zero remorse or zero regard. Uh, but luckily, it's not a piece of crap. I spent my own money on this. $20 to be exact. And the reason I'm reviewing the first generation of 8-Bit Do uh, Zero is that it is not too much different from the Zero Two. And I think that either one of them that you pick up you will be very, very pleasantly surprised. So, so just to start at the basics, it's a Bluetooth controller and it pairs to anything. It pairs to your Android or iOS smartphone. It pairs to Windows, pairs to Mac. It's just a basic Bluetooth controller at its heart, which makes it extremely compatible. Um, so there, there's no denying it. It's a very, very small controller as a matter of fact if you're an adult man or an adult woman hold up your thumb it's about as big as your thumb that is how big this controller is but don't let that dissuade you too much there is a use case scenario for this and i've been meaning to make a video or dabbling in my mind about making a video specifically about the perfect mobile gaming setup and it was going to um, be very much centered around the 8-bit doe zero once i heard or saw that 8-bit doe was releasing a, a mini controller like this i got very excited because 8-bit doe like i mentioned earlier makes the best in my opinion third-party uh, console and pc and android or whatever you want to call it or whatever you want to use it for controllers ever like the, they make the best third-party switch controllers they make the best third-party super nintendo controllers the best third-party sega genesis controllers all sorts of different controllers they make even controllers that sorry it's so small i dropped it uh even controllers that are compatible, like I mentioned, with old Super Nintendos, with old Sega Genesis, and they convert it to wireless. Basically, you put the uh, transceiver into the port of your Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, and now you have a wireless Sega Genesis controller or Super Nintendo controller. But let's stick to the 8-bit Do Zero. Again, it costs $20. Even the 8-bit Do Zero 2 uh, costs $20. It's very cheap and very, very worth it. So let's talk about that use case scenario. Uh, A few moments ago, I mentioned that it is part of my perfect mobile gaming setup. There's a little asterisk by that because it depends on your definition of ultimate mobile gaming setup because this controller that's not beat around the bush, it's tiny and I would not recommend it for prolonged gaming sessions. Again, no beating around the bush. Your hands are cramped. While the controls are great, and I'll get to the controls in a moment, you just can't get around the fact that it's small and that you're going to have to manipulate your hands in a way that works best for you. I found a way that works best for me. I kind of hold it like this. If you're watching the YouTube video, you can see what I'm doing. But I kind of hold it like that. I can fire off Hadouken's 
in Street Fighter with the best of them. I've always said that my test for a controller is going to be centered around the Hadouken test. How easy it is it to go from down to forward and throw and punch and throw a fireball in Street Fighter 2? I think that's a good baseline benchmark for any controller. That separates the men from the boys in terms of the D-pad and even analog sticks, even though I don't like playing fighting games with analog sticks. Most fighting games anyways, especially not Street Fighter. So how good is the analog stick on the 8-bit Do 0 and Zero Two, 2 Wonderful. For what it is, for the size that it is, it's about the size of a dime, it is exquisite. The inputs are very, very tactile. You have about two millimeters of travel, which is bonkers. MacBooks, MacBooks don't even have two millimeters of key travel. So the fact that the buttons have two millimeters of travel in the direction pad, D-pad is two millimeters of travel in the shoulder pads, about, it feels eh, maybe one millimeter of travel of the, of the uh, shoulder buttons. They're very clicky, very responsive. Every button on here is so clicky and responsive. But that D-pad is absolutely ideal for 2D platformers. You'll notice that there is no analog stick, no analog function on the 8-bit Do 0 or 0 2. So that means games that, re that rely on, the, on analog movement or analog input of any kind aren't the best. Yes, you can map analog movement to the D-pad in most games, um, but you're not getting the 360 degrees of rotation, 360 degrees of control with a D-pad. You're getting eight ways of control. So you're getting up, diagonal right, up, right, right diagonal down, down, and so forth. So you have eight areas of movement with a D-pad, and those eight movements on the D-pad for the 8-bit Do 0 and Zero 2 are just exquisite, absolutely exquisite. And again, consider that this thing costs $20. The buttons, the face buttons, feel Wonderful. It really is amazing what 8 Do has been able to do in such a small form factor with the face buttons, with the D-pad, with the shoulders, even the start select button feel great. Um, the whole unit is very sturdy. I have dropped this thing many, 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 many times. It's very durable. It has a keychain loop. You can actually use this as part of your keychain. So my use case scenario is this as far as traveling, and this is why I consider it kind of my ultimate mobile gaming setup is the fact that you know in jeans that they have that uh it used to be a, a tiny pocket like on the right pocket of most jeans that has a smaller pocket inset in that big pocket it used to be that you would carry things like your lighter back when everybody smoked you'd have a lighter inside there this fits beautifully in that little cigarette lighter pocket that little pocket in your jeans it was built for this i actually in that little pocket i keep guitar picks i keep a usb thumb drive and i keep this 8-bit do uh zero controller with me at all times that's why it makes it the best in my consideration in my opinion the best ultra mobile gaming setup i have this paired to my uh, in my case, my Android uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy Note 9 smartphone paired over Bluetooth. The case, the little thin case that my uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 9 has on it, has this kickstand that kicks out. So I can lay it on a table and just have it oriented towards my face. And I have my little 8-bit Doe controller with me at all times. I'm playing games on the go. And I, I, ha I always have both of these with me, with me. That's why this is the ultimate mobile gaming setup, in my opinion. I always have my phone with me. And I always have my 8-bit Doe controller with me. 8-bit Doe Zero controller with me. It is awesome for that, going to a wedding, going to some sort of function, and you need a little me time, a little escape off to a side room where you can play a game, or just be <laughs> just be baller status and go to some sort of function or gala or event and be playing video games with your smartphone and 8-bit dough, uh, zero controller, or zero two controller anywhere you're at. It's, they're always with you. You can eat. They're easily pocketable. Like I said, the 8-bit Doe Zero controller and Zero Two goes perfectly in that little uh, lighter pocket on jeans. Um, and it's just a wonderful thing to have with you at all times. Now, let's get to let's get to the obvious. Like I mentioned, it's very small. You don't want it for prolonged uh, gaming uh, gaming expenditures. Let's just say. The best Bluetooth controller, in my opinion, bar none, is the Xbox uh, 
uh, Xbox One S controller. It pairs to Android. It pairs to Windows. I know for sure. It pairs to all sorts of devices. The controls are buttery smooth. I will say all almost perfect. It is the best Bluetooth controller in my opinion all around. But you can't exactly just throw it in your pocket. You don't have an Xbox One S controller with you all the time unless you're with me like me and I always have one in my backpack because I basically bring my backpack everywhere but if I'm wearing a suit or a tuxedo or anything like that I can't bring my backpack everywhere I can't bring my backpack into a function sometimes you can't bring backpacks to work or what have you I always have the 8-bit do zero controller in my pocket and for that fact it is wonderful it is wonderful to bang out a few minutes of of a 2D platformer. It's wonderful to bang out a few minutes of a fighting game. I could say you could play for on this maybe for in my scenario, my personal use case scenario, 15 minutes or so is about where I have to call it. I'm six foot one. My hands aren't the biggest in the world, but they're still quite cramped on this controller over long periods of time. But for quick gaming sessions, you're waiting for an oil change uh, at the mechanic. Perfect. The 8-bit Do Zero controller is perfect in those type of use case scenarios.